Welcome back to another uh, another evening at the Alaska Bourbon Cabin. That's right. It's chilly up here in Alaska. We're in the the bleak midwinter. It's we're getting dumped on with snow. Oh man, plowing at least every other day. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. But it is fantastic weather for bourbon drinking. It is, and I have got a new one today for us. So I got to tell you guys. So I go into one of the local stores in Anchorage. Mm -hmm. um, pick up I had ordered a bottle one of their single barrels and come in and he's like hey we got in this new bib and tucker are you interested and I'm like well I've never had anything bib and tucker like and he's like first time I'm hearing about it. full disclosure so he's like oh well it's their new it's batch number one of their double char um and I was like what do you know about it? and he's like nothing I know nothing about it so I'm like okay it was 51 dollars and I'm like oh yeah mysteries afoot for right 51 dollars so Bib and Tucker Double Char Bourbon. It has an age statement of aged six years, except for then when you read about it, it is the initial aging is six years at minimum. And then it is then aged in the, I wrote it down here because I wasn't going to keep it straight, um, in the heavily charred and smoked new barrels for a minimum of five months. Mm. So realistically, at minimum, it's a six and a half year bourbon. They they stated at age six, realistically, at minimum six and a half. Better than or so, um, than or so. The one thing, and I, guys, we've never had Bib and Tucker. We've never, I mean, I've seen it on the shelf, but I've never actually picked any of it up. I did find it interesting and funny, and we didn't actually talk about this, but um, they market it as a small batch bourbon which I find funny because I have, this is bottle number <laughs> 67,671. So I'm not sure I'd call that small. It was just, but you good know, for them. But good for them. Good so for them. I'm sure um, at one, all bourbons start off as small mass bourbons. You guys pop that. Um, yeah. So just some other things of that. So six years, new American Oak, five months in the heavily charred new barrel. Um, I tried to look up the exact mash bill on the Bibb and Tucker stuff for this for this double char. Um, all they say is that it's a mix of their corn, rye, and barley um, that they distill in house in Tennessee. There, so I couldn't actually come up with an exact an exact mash bill. But um, and they do claim that their corn is sourced ninety miles from the distillery, yeah. which support local ag. Okay. Well, let's break into this. Yeah, distilled in Tennessee, bottled by Bibb and Tucker, Columbia, Tennessee. So right. we'll see. Fresh cork. Oh, my Oh, and it's got like the old style old, cork. Yeah, yeah. Old style. So <laughs> well, I get to listen to that all day. Let's see here. All right. Well, it's definitely got the the amber esque notes it's of a double. Definitely charred. dark. Yeah. Can't tell. Of course, they give you a dark bottle, so you can't Next actually tell. More charred. Oh, that is a only nose. Huh? um, only eighty-eight proof. Is that? I'm not sure that okay. we said that. I, so I am a little concerned at. Oh, I did write much, that down. Yeah, so only eighty-eight proof. Which my initial, without even having smelt this yet, I want this in cask strength. I want a double char. Uh, but let's admit our bias here at the cabin. We we do like the higher proofs. So, yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with a low proof bourbon. Just different tastes. But ooh, that's just a weird nose. I, uh, Definitely alcohol coming through, even though it only is 88 proof. It smells stronger than 88 proof. That's, uh -huh. that's for dang sure. I'm not really getting charred, though. No, I get like the dark red fruits, like the cherry, cherry Coke. Yeah. Oh, oh, the Coke. Cherry yeah. Coke. Coke. Maybe sarsaparilla. Maybe that's the yeah. Maybe a little yeah. Sars like like a root beery cherry cokey. Yeah, yeah. So Not quite then, licorice, but so it does smell sweet. Cherry now Coke. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I, I can't. I'm no, gonna... once you said cherry Coke, cherry it was Coke. Game over for my nose. <laughs> well, cheers. That's interesting. It's very interesting. It's sweeter than I expected. It's a, it's really sweet. It's like, it's like, viscous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like it coats the mouth really well, though. Like if this was a wine, it'd be a port almost. 
Mm. Now it tastes young. It does. She she tastes fresh. Yeah. Yeah, definitely young. It tastes like it needs to sit longer. Like this is not six years is not old. Enough. Although, hear me out. I think this might be damn near perfect for an old fashioned. It almost okay. tastes like an old fashioned right out of the bottle. You know, it, it's got kind of a sweet and kind of a maybe a cherry, maybe orange. I don't know quite what I'm getting fruit wise, but it's almost like an old fashioned without an old fashioned. I'm really getting that. But interestingly enough, if this was a blind, I would not guess it was charred at all. I don't I don't get much of a smoky. No, there is enough of a like a viscousy note in there that I might have called it a mm. finished bourbon. Like I'm not sure that I same thing. I, I'm not sure that I would have called it a double char. I could have got that oakiness or you know yeah. toasted or a finished of some sort. Yeah. Um, like this very well could have been finished in like a sauterne barrel or mm -hmm. a port barrel mm -hmm. or, and, but definitely I, you're right. It, it could, it's a finished bourbon. That's definitely identifiable. Now this could be my own hubris biting me in the butt here. But when I thought double charred, I was expecting like in the scotch world, I'm expecting to be oh, smacked like with heat. Oh, I was expecting yeah, I, to get yeah, okay. smacked with char, like okay. charcoaly, but it's not, it's with a subtle oak? pleasant. Yeah, pleasant kind of toastedness to it, and which and I wonder if that heavy char um, and smoked is part of the reason this is so sweet is opening up the you know really opening could up be. the grains it of that second be. barrel and pulling that sweetness out. But so what'd you um, pay for this? Fifty one. Oh, well, that's worth it. Fifty one fifty yeah. before tax. So I think you know it came out just shy of sixty bucks for yeah. you know eighty eight proof. Now I will say. I definitely, after tasting this, I definitely want to try that in a cask strength version. Oh, absolutely. Right. That give, sounds fantastic. Give me this at 125 proof and let me proof it down as I see fit. And let me try it at 125. And yeah. Or no, whatever so they... We're going to do some research and, and I'm sure they have a cask strength. I hope they do. Let us know if they do. But um, that, that would be... Would, yeah, yeah. That's a grand idea. Let friend. us know. Bib and Tucker Double Char. Cask strength batch one. And if not, if they don't have it, Bib and Tucker, I'm telling you right now, mm. start bottling it tomorrow because uh, that you will sell it. You will sell it. Yeah, for for folks who like the complex and hot, this would be right on that and right on the money. And if you say I got bottles sixty, almost sixty eight thousand, <laughs> you have enough liquid to you can spare it you, you can, can spare, spare it. it to not water it down to 88 yeah, proof and yeah. dilute it down freaking make make five thousand bottles of cask strength and it would they'll all sell guarantee it okay out of 10 what do you rank this this is quite good um i might get some flack for this people have mixed okay. opinions on mixed drinks but i'm going to keep this in my bar personally because i think it's going to be a fantastic mixer okay and a hybrid it's also a pretty dang good sipper like yeah. this is one i'd sip too so i'm gonna rank this seven and a half pretty solid okay okay you i'm going a little lower i'm going seven one okay yeah seven yeah. one um and for me it it's the bias of going back to the proof that, <laughs> you right, do like your proof <laughs> when you can't the issue that i have with it is like you i don't think you can water this down no right so no. like i have to drink this right here the way it is that's true. I might have to take back my thing about mixing because now that you're mentioning it, it does lack that nice, warm, not quite a burn, not quite a sting, but that nice, hey, it's alcohol. It's bourbon in the back of the throat. Yeah. It's a little flat there. Yeah. So flavor-wise, really good. Really but good flavor. Real sweet. You got to be in the mood for sweet. You got to be in the mood for sweet. But um, I will, I will acquiesce. Strength-wise, it leaves something to be desired. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think uh, cast strength would... Oh, that'd be good. I would be so good. It'd be like Stag Jr. Jr. Oh, yeah. yeah. man. Them's are fighting words. Oh. Okay. Well, you guys have a good evening from the uh, Alaska Bourbon Cabin. We'll see you next time. Happy drinking.